Thanks for joining us. For today's experiment, we'll explore various concepts of optics using the laser refraction tank and some of the geometric optics that come with the device. A laser refraction tank allows students to observe how light bends and travels through air into a liquid or solid and out into the air again. But to fully understand this concept, we need to better understand why light bends. First, it's important to know that light is a form of energy and has a wavelength and velocity. In a vacuum, the speed of light is a constant, about 300 million meters per second. But when light enters a transparent medium, like water or glass, the velocity of the light beam will slow down based on the medium's density. And in order to maintain the wave integrity, the light must bend. For our first experiment, remove the dial phase from the device and fill the tank with water to the horizon line. Attach the water tank back to the device, position the laser on the top half of the device, and turn it on. Do you see how the light beam bends after passing through the water? This is because the water is denser than the air, which slows down the light, causing it to bend. This change in direction is called refraction. Now, position the laser so it first passes through the water, then into the air. Here you can see that the light reflects to the other side, but once you move the laser, you'll see another beam appear. This is the refracted beam. From here, we can use the refraction tank to calculate the index of refraction of water. The refractive index is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in a medium. The law of refraction, also known as Snell's law, is a formula that is used to describe the relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Here, N1 represents the refractive index of the first medium, water, while sine theta1 represents the incident angle, which we measured to be 40 degrees. N2 is the index of the second medium, or air in this case, with sine theta2 representing the angle of refraction, which is 60 degrees. Now, with this information, you'll be able to solve the Snell's Law equation. In this experiment, we used water, but try using different liquids such as isopropyl alcohol or olive oil to see how the beam refracts through them. So, now that we've measured refraction in water, I'm sure you're wondering how this relates to everyday life. First, you can thank refraction for your ability to see. And if your vision is less than perfect, you can also thank refraction for correcting it. When light enters our eyes, it is focused to the back of the eyeball where the retina detects the light and sends the message to the brain. For the next experiment, we're going to use the biconvex optic to simulate how the eye focuses light. Start by detaching the dial face from the water tank. From here, you can either hold the device or lay it down on a table. Attach the laser splitter and align the laser to the zero degree marker. Next, attach the biconvex lens to the device and align it to the 90 degree line. Now, note where the beam's focus falls. Our eyes sometimes interpret light differently than others. This is due to either a differently shaped eyeball or a lens. For individuals with nearsightedness, the focus of light falls short and does not reach the brain. The eye interprets faraway objects as fuzzy or out of focus. This type of eye condition is also referred to as myopia. To correct the lack of focus at the retina, a concave lens can be used. To demonstrate this, place the plano concave lens in front of the biconvex lens. What sort of changes do you notice? For those with farsightedness, when light enters the eye, the focus falls beyond the eyeball and the light does not reach the retina in focus. This is often referred to as hyperopia. To demonstrate this, first note where the focus from the biconvex lens falls. Now, place the plano convex lens in front of the biconvex lens and you'll see how the focus point changes. Notice that the focus falls much closer to the biconvex lens. In patients with farsightedness, doctors will use a convex lens in your glasses to correct vision. And in patients with nearsightedness, doctors will use concave lenses. If you look more closely, you can see that refraction is all around us. Light being bent by raindrops creates rainbows. Prisms create the same effect and allows us to experience all the colors of light in our homes. And of course, refraction is why diamonds are so beautiful. The laser refraction tank is a wonderful way to examine the effects of light on many objects. 
Today we touched on just a few of the many optics you can use with a refraction tank. Let us know how you're using this device in the comments below, and we'll be back in a few weeks with another video. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Until next time, have fun learning.